For this disk method problem, we're going to graph these functions and we're going to rotate the bounded region about the y-axis. So looking at a graph of these three equations, first I know that if I plug x equals 0 into this first function, I'm going to get y equals 1. So we're going to have the point 0, 1 on this graph and as x increases, the value of y decreases and we have an asymptote at y equals 0. Now x equals 0 is right here. We'll say x equals 2 is right here. And unless something else was intended by this question, we really need the equation y equals 0 to fully bound this region. So up here in the problem, I feel like y equals 0 should have been included. Okay, so you'll see that there's an additional complication with this problem when using the disk method. Because you'll notice that up in this region here, the radius of our disk is given by the equation 1 over x plus 1. And that is true for all y values above this dotted line right here. However, as soon as we start looking at this region below that dotted line, you'll see that the radius of our disk is just 2. And that's true everywhere below this dotted line. Since the radius of our disk is given by two different functions above and below this line, we need to split this integral into two pieces. Notice first that with this integral, each one of these disks has a width of dy, so we are going to be integrating with respect to y, meaning our limits of integration are going to be limits on y. And it would probably be a good idea to first find what y value splits this region. Well, this y value is given by the function y equals 1 over x plus 1 when x equals 2. So our y value is is 1 over 2 plus 1 or 1 third. So in other words, we're going to have one integral that goes from 0 to 1 third, and we're going to have a second integral that goes from y equals 1 third to y equals 1. This first integral should be the simpler of the two. When y is between 0 and 1 third, you'll notice that we're in this region here, and in this region, the radius of our disk is just 2. In our second region, our y value is between 1 third and 1, and you'll notice that the radius, again, is given by the function y equals 1 over x plus 1. But we need this radius in terms of y, so we need to solve this equation for x. We do that by first multiplying both sides of the equation by x plus 1. We can divide both sides by y now, and we can subtract 1 from both sides. That gives us that the radius in this region is 1 over y minus 1. So that's our setup, but the integration of this second piece of the integral is going to be fairly complicated. So let's run through it really fast. The first integral should be pretty simple. 2 squared is 4. 4 pi is just a constant which we can take out of the integral. The second integral needs to be foiled. The result of that foiling is here. I'm just going to leave the first integral as it is and rewrite the second integral in a way that's a little bit easier to integrate. Now we can actually do the integration on each of these pieces. The integral of y to the negative 2 is just negative y to the negative first power or negative 1 over y. The integral of 2 over y is 2 times the natural log of y and the integral of 1 is y. Now completing this integration just means plugging in the limits and simplifying. You'll notice that this negative 1 and this positive 1 cancel. You'll also recall that the natural log of 1 is 0, so this entire term just goes to 0. As for the last term, 1 over 1 third is just 3. 2 natural log of 1 third, I don't know how to simplify, and 1 third doesn't simplify any further as well. We can combine our like terms here. Now you'll notice that this 4 thirds pi and this positive 8 thirds pi can be combined to give us 12 thirds pi, which is just 4 pi. The last term, again, doesn't really simplify. Don't forget that we have to distribute that pi through the parentheses, and our final answer looks something like this. That is the volume of this region when rotated about the y-axis. All right, I hope that helped you out. I'll see you in the next one.